the profile interview segment this week, I will be speaking with the General Secretary of NUI, who is also the National President of the United Labour Congress. He will be telling me what labour leaders across Nigeria should do to ensure that workers' rights are protected, especially when it comes to the urgent need to review the national minimum wage. Join me. It's good to have you on the program. The APC committee, headed by um, the governor of Kaduna State, um, Governor El Rufai, has recommended that the minimum wage should be moved from the exclusive list to the concurrent list. What's your take on this? Well, one thing that is glaring is that the APC committee is not the National Assembly. But it is equally good that El Rufai spoke and we are now aware of the thinking of APC, and that the APC wants minimum wage to be put in the concurrent list instead of the exclusive list. Uh, the Nigerian workers will respond accordingly, because we did not vote APC to carry out that level of constitutional amendment. When they were coming, they didn't tell us they were going to take minimum wage from the exclusive list to the concurrent list. What that means is that they are indirectly doing away with the issue of uh, federation. They want to look at a kind of confederal arrangement where the states generate their resources and pay the workers. Now, if the country wants to go confederal, that would be a different ballgame. But I don't think that any worker, and I think that recommendation amounts to political suicide. No worker, and we are going to go into sensitization of workers. No worker will hear that, both active and non-active workers will hear that statement and still go the way of APC. Because it is going, it's anti-worker, it is so unprogressive, and it has never happened. You know, anywhere except those with another brand of, of a political arrangement. Erofi, I think, for being honest, to tell us what APC is planning, we are going to commend him instead of doing it from the back door. But the workers will equally know that somebody wants to separate so that Nigerian worker will not be a Nigerian worker. Now you have an emo worker who earns a certain amount of money. You have a Bruno worker. You have a Lagos worker. Separately. And then there's, there will be no basis for them to collect money from federation account. Because why give them federation account if they will generate from their own local resources and pay themselves? So it's an indirect way of saying, okay, minimum wage, everybody, state handle your minimum wage. State handle your police. State handle your army. Handle your navy. Handle your security. So I think we have to discuss all these things jointly. We can't take the issue of minimum wage in isolation. So uh, when they bring it to the table, I think we'll go there. But Nigerian workers are such that if we say that APC will not win election again in this country, they will not win. And I think that those who are those advising them should have advised them on the people to engage. Nigerian workers are not the people you can take on on these issues. AFI may be playing with teachers in in a Kaduna, if we decide, especially those of us from ULC, decide to look at Aerofire, in the next 24 days, he will not be governor there. In the next 24 days, Kaduna will not be governable to him. So Nigerian workers are sorry that even when you rig election, they can challenge the election and shut down this area and you will not enter office. So in case he doesn't know the people who is calling Niger that are called Nigerian workers, that is trying to attack their source of income and their livelihood. I think the APC should have a better committee to review it, to have a broader outlook and tell us whether this is what they want. So, so that we can equally re-strategize and engage them. So how do you think this is going to affect um, negotiation looking at the um, tripartite um, committee that has been set up? Well, if you look at the statement from the, I think, is it the director of budget? from the budget office or so, you discover that there's no sincerity in the negotiation. 
if a man comes up to tell you that, oh, we don't have this, uh, uh, we don't have provision for the minimum wage in 2018 budget, what is telling you that we want to keep you busy deceiving yourself that you are negotiating? That we can even think of it as a political tool to win an election in 2019. So maybe at the eve of 2019, we can say, oh, we have increased minimum wage. And since he made that statement, some of us from uh, the Labour Think Tank, we have been reviewing it. And we knew it was an honest statement from him. So uh, probably with time, we are going to respond to that. But that's the fact, that they, are, they don't have any plans for the implementation of minimum wage, either this year or not. So whatever things you are hearing, either from Gigi or whatever, is sheer political rhetorics. And that some of us are too old for them to think that they are deceiving. I think they are deceiving themselves. Um, Gombe State government has um, said that they are ready to pay the 56,000 Naira minimum wage proposed. Looking at the fact that um, the DG budget office, um, Ben, uh, ben Akabwe, they have already said that it's not in the budget for 2018. What do you feel? looking at the fact that some states are not even paying the minimum wage and the state is coming out forward to say they are ready to pay more than double that amount. What's your take on that? Well, I think what is happening is that in the first instance, it is instructive to note that the Gombe state government is not a PC. That might be one. And he may be making a point for his own political party in the first instance. But if in actual fact, is ready to pay, then some of us should go there and learn a lot. Because I'm not sure they're among the oil producing states. And let me say this. In 2015, before the election, which APC won in almost some of the states, but in Gombe, the governor there was worker friendly. Even a month before that, he paid productivity and was not owing any worker. So even if you are flushing out all members of his political family, he remained there. And from what he has said, he has shown commitment that he's worker friendly. Now the magic is that, why don't you study why Gombe can pay 56, or they are willing to pay 56, and Imo, Anambra, some other states can pay 56. But let me clear this before we go into a political trap that they are setting, whether they can pay or not. By the time minimum wage was set at 18,000 Naira, that is the benchmark. And under the law, the very moment the benchmark is set, any state that has the capacity can pay more than that. So I don't even see anything holding ben, uh, Gombe state government from paying 50 as of today. Since the benchmark is 18,000, that 18,000 is the level at which you can go under. But the ceiling up there is not pegged. So I think the states that can pay should go ahead and pay. But some other states that can pay with what is happening in Gombe now shows that there is, there is not their priority. They may have other priorities. Contrary to human beings, they may be interested on contract award why people are dying. So maybe Gombe State government is talking of people first. And where you have people first, that country will grow. <clears throat> I think if he has said it, he must have checked his resources, and I think it's doable. Most other states can still do that, or even do better. So it's commendable. Well, talking about growth, um, we still have so many states that are not paying workers' salaries as at when due, and we also have some states that have been holding for as much as 10, 12, 22 months. What's your take on this? Owing to the fact that the minimum wage has to be reviewed, and right now we are in February 2018, and we still have some states that have been I think they are, black they are blackmailing us. It's just like what Aerofi did in Kaduna. Aerofi was doing it on behalf of some of his uh, APC governors to reduce the staff population pending if there will be any increase in salary so that they will say that they can not pay. So he was trying to reduce the state workforce. Many of the states will still do it. They will still try it. Before now, even before the states were paying, 
Some of the governors before them were paying. Suddenly, they are trying to blackmail us to say that even 18,000 will can pay. Why do you want to increase it? It's an old logic. They were paying 18,000 and they moved a, a pump price from 97 to 145. I was thinking that that's additional revenue for them. And they have been recovering billions from loot. And they have been giving us figures of what customs is collecting. And the tax office, what they are collecting. Do a simple arithmetic and compare it with the number of roads they have constructed, if any, and the rail lines, or whatever they have done, and find out why is it that they can't pay 18,000 minimum wage. Okay, according to law, the Nigerian Labor Congress, ULC, TUC, um, are supposed to have met earlier before now because the minimum wage is supposed to be reviewed every five years, and that ultimatum or time has elapsed. If we have a vibrant labor in Nigeria, what are the steps that should be, have been taken at this point, owing to the fact that the government seems to be foot dragging on ensuring that workers have a living wage? Well, the, uh, l let me pick the word vibrant labor. You can't have vibrant labor under the state appointees as labor leaders. And that was what was at the soul of the contest for NLC or TUC leadership over the years. When you have those people who are government employees imposed on us, there's nothing they can do. And I'm saying it here clearly. But in few occasions where you have people from the private sector, like when we pushed in Adam Sushomole, they are not looking at who will sack them from work. And as of today, NLC, TUC, I challenge them to say that they are not extension of the Federal Ministry of Labor. They are. And with that at the back of your mind, even after the Director of Budget had spoken, are they still waiting for anything? Is there anything that they don't know? Well, because these people are extension of government, and they are government staff, government workers. That has been the problem between the private sector and public sector battling for the soul of leadership of these organizations. Now, government having seized those ones. Now, they are now seeing ULC as a recalcitrant organization. However, on this subject matter, the public sector unions are the soul of it. They are the people that depend on the enactment of minimum wage before they could get 18,000. In my sector and in the private sector, it's a lie. If our agreement expires, we'll go and renew it. As I today, the minimum wage is just to get a benchmark to negotiate. So we don't wait for minimum wage. So but for, because the ones that wait for minimum wage, government has seized them. And they are helpless. The highest these two labor centers can do today is to protest. They don't have the capacity to shut down the economy activities of this country. They don't. Now, because they want to remain relevant, answer that they are the people that are recognized, they have not condescended to talk to those that have the capacity to do the changes. Ordinarily, why would they go and protest in the streets of Kaduna while RFI was insulting us? From here, could have stopped power supply to Kaduna, could have supplied, stopped fuel, there wouldn't have been an, any, any train entering Kaduna. There would be no plane. And we watch Aero 5 for one week. They don't have the capacities. So they just move around the streets dancing. And he was looking at them. So the very moment the labor movement puts their house in order, and people start to say that they are recognized without power. When you are recognized and you don't have power, you are helpless. So the very moment we articulate these issues and look at the worker issue, whether he's in the private sector, in the public sector, he's a teacher, he's a, a, an engineer, he's an electricity worker, he's a petroleum worker, and aggregate it and do the battle. Let them still answer their name and say they are recognized by Njige. But meanwhile, the Nigerian worker would have had a voice 
in the country. Until that is done, the minimum wage negotiation can last the next 10 years. Nothing will happen. But those of us in the private sector, we must review our agreement when it, whenever it expires. So it is in their own interest for us to talk. I'm not going to answer NLC. Let them answer their NLC. And they are recognized. But if you are recognized and you don't have powers, the person is useless. So, so are you saying that the unity of the labor unity of the labor movement, both those that are recognized, both those that have not been registered, including the informal worker who is on the road, is at stake. Now, until you bring them together, that is when even a domestic servant in the house we know that, oh, minimum wage has increased. My madam, my madam, what do you go do for me? That's it. Meanwhile, the domestic worker in the house does not belong to any union. But when this thing is happening, it will favor the domestic worker. It will reflect there. And if you have people are moving, check out those who protest, those who go on strike. It's not just the ones that are saying that they have license. Any license that you can use that can't put food on your table is useless. That piece of paper should be thrown away. It's good to have you on the program. God bless you. And that's all we can take on this episode of Labor Lens. Join us same time next week for a fresh edition of the program. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember, labor creates wealth.